Hi folks, Doyle Dykes here. Welcome to my Sunday String Along. And uh, I wanted to start with something a little bit different. I wrote this song right here in this room years ago. My wife, Rita, was doing the laundry downstairs. And I'm just kind of like... And she says, what is that? And, I, and I'm going, uh, Tennessee Stomp, you know, because I was stomping. She said, well, don't forget it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I cut a little bit of that out, actually. That's a long song, but uh, I haven't done that in a long time. <laughs> Tennessee Stomp. Uh, of course, when I do it in Texas, I said, no, that's Texas Stomp. <laughs> so anyway, I'm all right with that, too. Uh, this is an old Telecaster that I've had for a long time now, and uh, I'll tell you about that story. But Telecasters, you know, they like that. <laughs> yeah, I ain't Miss Moses, okay? <laughs> oh man, uh, Jerry Reed, I mean, he was the one of the best tele players ever in the world. And then James Burton, of course. Down in Louisiana. Uh, they like uh, tellies down in Louisiana, evidently. <laughs> Well, what a what a an intro, boy James, Elvis. Woo. Wow! And you know I'm one of the best 
telly players too, or that type of playing, and I'm sure he did it on telly and also on his jazz master was Wayne Moss, you know. And so, I mean, these guitars, uh, boy, they were just made for that sort of thing. But, you know, uh, it's just an instrument. That's what it is. I mean, uh, I, I know, uh, who was who it, uh, Green, uh, that used to play uh, a Telecaster. And there's a guy up in also, up in, in Canada that was a, a wonderful, uh, wonderful jazz player that played the Telecaster. And so uh, if I said, uh, I want you to play something uh, really beautiful. Oh, you know, if this guitar could talk and it, it would uh, it would probably say, no, I, you know, in fact, uh, boy, you know, you, you see little burns around it and things. And no telling where all this guitar has been played uh, as it is now, uh, you know, only by me pretty much. But before that, you know, uh, where was this guitar? It, but ha, you know, if if this guitar could talk, oh no, he's you know, why don't you, why don't you get that other guitar to play something pretty? Oh well, okay. You know what? If I just said, I'm not going to argue with you, and, and I just and use somebody else, I just use something else, and I have uh, my guild here. Oh, that's a nice instrument, and uh, I have my old Martin here. It's a great instrument. I have a, a Gretsch here. That's a beautiful instrument, and uh, and then I have my sand guitar. So to play something beautiful, um, and it's going, yeah, play the sand. Yeah, it's it's way better than I am. Okay, well, I'll, I'll do that, you know. And, uh, oh yeah, and I have to admit, it sounds really, really good, you know.
Beautiful, yeah, I have to say, this guitar sounds really great, and it was made for that kind of thing. You know, but uh, speaking of Jerry Reed, he played a Telecaster, and he played a nylon string guitar. In fact, the first person I ever saw play one of these on television was Jerry Reed. And so it's up to the master as what he wants to play, in which instrument he wants to play. It's not up to the instrument itself. <laughs> it's not up to the guitar. You know, and I want to tell you a little bit about this guitar here. It, it started off as a, a, a 1958 original Telecaster. It's the original neck here that was on that telly. And it's been messed with here or there, you know. They, uh, the, I think at some point they added another string tree or whatever. I, that doesn't matter to me. I had it refretted, but the neck is amazing. And it's so resonant. It's amazing. 1958. And so uh, the body had, uh, it didn't have, a, uh, have the string through for you guitar players. It, it had uh, the one that feeds through the back here. So it's a, it's a top uh, loading bridge. And so the guy that had it was a friend of mine. He put the neck on another body and gave it to me because he thought that it was bogus. He thought it was, was an original. He didn't realize there were some models, not all of them, because I had an, an original 1958. In fact, I, I gave that one back to Kelly Barber. We traded back something, but uh, I thought, you got to have this guitar back. It was an original 58. And when I went to Fender, they copied that guitar. I said, can we use that guitar? And Larry Thomas uh, gave me a personal, uh, you know, he, he took me all over, just a guided tour by himself. It was just the two of us and uh, all over the Fender factory. And they said, well, Doyle can, and, uh, uh, in fact, it was such a, a Sergio Vallin, Vallin uh, came in from Mana and we played some together and then, I played for his, uh, a luncheon that they had there, and and we just had a wonderful time. And, and he said, can we borrow that guitar? I said, sure. And so I, I said, I'll pick it up at the end of the day. At the end of the day, they said, can we use this a little longer? They had it for several months. And they, I think they put it in an MRI, and they copied everything on that guitar. And they said, well, we're coming out with a new American vintage model and so uh that guitar was my guitar that that actually the one i got from kelly i had nothing to do with it it was a 1958 original and they copied that thing and they said we want to make a a, a replica of a 58 just like had, if you had gone into the store to get one because back then they were all over the map like i said some of their 58s were top loading others weren't this was a perfect example of a 58 and the regular uh, backloading 1958. And so if you see one of those, I mean, they're great. And I had the prototype, and uh, it, it, anyway, it was signed uh, by Chris Fleming, who made that guitar, and he signed it to me. And one day, uh, one night at a concert, I gave it to, I gave it back, I gave that one to Kelly. Then later on, I said, these guitars need to go together. So you had the replica and the original. He has those. But I kept this one. This one is uh, special. It really is. Uh, this, uh, uh, so the neck, when, when my friend found out that it was all original, he went back to the guy he gave the, the body to. He gave everything. He gave the heart of the guitar away. He, he literally gave it away. The, the pickups, the body, he thought it was bogus. Come to find out it was original. And then the guy wouldn't give it back to him. He said, well, you give me the neck. I mean, I don't know. Anyway, that's just, and so it's just one of those things that happened. And so uh, he kept the neck for years in a closet. And I, I guess it was singing, I ain't got no body. <laughs> and so there was no body. And so uh, uh, he, he put a body on it and, and pickups and gave it to me. So I took, I took it to Kelly Barber, and he put another body, it was real lightweight, and he put period correct pickups, except for one. When, one years ago, I was at Seymour Duncan Pickups, and, uh, and I went in, and, and he said, hey, Doyle, you know, this is the very first antiquity pickup. And he handed it to me. He said, I want you to have it. And signed it number one. I kept it in my glass case over here for years. And I thought, I'm going to put it in a guitar. So I put it in this guitar. 
this is a period correct from Kelly uh, in, in the 50s, uh, Fender Telecaster pickup, and, and also everything else that goes along with it. This, and so this was all period correct. This is a replica uh, pick guard. But then later on when I got with Guild here, uh, they were owned by Fender. I told the story to Larry Thomas and then the guys in the custom shop. And they said, man, that's a great story. We're going to make you another body from Fender. And so they made this and they made it real thin skin. So, uh, so it will, some of this even flakes off now, but there's hardly no finish on it. And so it looks like it's out of the 50s. I mean, if, if I hadn't played the original 50s Telecaster that I got from Kelly, I would have thought this is the best Telecaster I'd ever played. And it still is an amazing guitar. It's probably one of the best ever. And, uh, but the thing is, for years, it, it was just a, a, just a, a neck. And it, it took the heart away. Everything was taken away from it. You know, and a lot of people feel that way. You know, well, I'm an instrument of, of you know, if I'm going to be an instrument of God, I'm not worthy to be used of God. I'm not worthy to, uh, for him to use me. You know, the Bible talks about th this. You know, he said he wants us to be a vessel unto honor for God. In, in Romans 6, 13, do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. But he says, but instead, give yourselves completely to God, for you were dead, but now you have new life. This guitar was given new life. And so use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. He wants to use you as an instrument, like I play this guitar and like you play your guitars or whatever you may play, if you play anything. And so God wants to play through us. He wants to show his love and his anointing and his power and his spirit and his glory. He wants to be glorified through us. But, uh, you know, like I said, if this guitar could talk, it might say, oh, you know, I, I don't make me play any of that, that pretty stuff. I'm just an old Telecaster. And you don't even know where I played all before I got this new body you put together. You know, I mean, I'm, I was deep into stuff. And, and uh, I'm just not worthy to be used of God. I mean, play that. I'm, I'm okay with that. You know, I'm all right with that kind of stuff, but nothing, nothing beautiful. I'm just not worthy of that. So you're going to play something pretty? Well, maybe. Well, I can do that. I saw Chet Atkins and Jerry Reed play in Telecasters. You can see it on YouTube. And they were playing. So God wants to set us apart. He wants to use us for his glory and for the master's use. You know, you can be a, a garbage can or you can be a vessel unto honor. You know what I'm saying? And so God wants to do great. He wants to, to put some great things on the inside of you if you'll just let him. He's not so worried about who you are. Last week on the string along, I talked about who am I that I can go to Pharaoh. And that's what Moses said. He's, in fact, Moses said, I'm slow of speech. He stuttered real bad. He said, I'm slow of tongue. I can't communicate. You know, what do you need to communicate? You need an unction. I am that. You remember the, what I said last week? If, if you didn't hear that, go back and listen to last week's string along. And I talked about Gideon. And I talked about the trumpets and the 300 men he had with him that lapped in the water like dogs. And those were the ones that the very ones God wanted to use. And the more excuses we make why we're not worthy, we're not able to do that. You're the very one God wants to prove himself through. And so they had these clay pots. 
Well, I read this past week, you know, they had the clay pots and then they had a lamp on the inside and a trumpet and said, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon blew the trumpets, broke the pots. You got to get yourself out of the way. We're made of clay and we're, get yourself out of the way and let the light of God shine through. I just read this week that they found these pots, these 3,100, these archaeologists found a, a 3,100 year old fragment of a jug and on it was the inscription of Jerubbabel, or Jerub, Jerubbaal, rather. I didn't say that right. Jerubbaal, and, uh, which is also who they called, it's what they called Gideon when he tore down the, the you know, uh, the god uh, and the, uh, of Baal and, and the idols, and he destroyed them. And they, so they called him Jerubbaal. And they found one of these fragments of one of those clay pots, can you believe that? Of course, we know it's true anyway, but it's just kind of cool to hear that. And uh, nevertheless, the foundation of God stand sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. He knows you even when you were lost in sin, even when you were a neck of a telecaster. Maybe you lost your identity. Maybe that's the only thing that had your identity that said fender on it. That's the only thing that says fender on any of this was there. And, uh, but you lost your identity. You see, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to take your identity. He wants to steal your uh, purpose in life. He wants to steal your heart and what God has put on the inside of you to be. And all those things, your dreams, your desires, he wants to take all that away from you. But God still knows who you are and nothing has changed. Uh, I, I heard, uh, I, I allude to Pastor Rick Warren a lot, but he said there are no plan Bs in life only a plan A. I have news for you. I believe plan A was for this guitar to turn out just like it did. You see, because uh, I'm, I'm more impressed with the story of how this guitar turned out now than if it had just been an original 58. Sure, it might have been worth more money, but one collector would have had it. But you guys are hearing this story all over the world. And, and that's an amazing thing because I, I think that we're like an old Telecaster. You know, I'm going to name this guitar right here on the show. I'm going to name this today. I've, I've called it several things. I've called it a, a Kelly Telly in the past, and Kelly would approve of this because it's got, it has a new body on it, and it has the Seymour Duncan. There's so many people that gave and contributed to this guitar. And uh, I once was lost, but now I'm found. How about Grace? This is Grace. This is my Grace guitar. So say, hello, Grace. <laughs> and so, it, as I said, the, if, the, if the instrument could talk, but it can't. It can't tell me that. Neither should we, as instruments of God, tell him that we can't do this. Oh, get somebody else. Who are we to do that? Who are we to say that to God if God chose you? He says, for uh, in a great house... In fact, let me back up. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of, the, of Christ depart from iniquity. In a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Well, I have trash cans around here, and there's all kinds of vessels. But if a man therefore purge himself from these things, he shall be a vessel unto honor and sanctified and meet for the master's use. There are certain things that are clean you wouldn't put in your garbage can and serve it on the table. And prepared unto every good work, flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the, the, the name of the Lord out of a pure, out of a pure heart. Now let's look at uh, what is a pure heart. David, who sinned, we talked about him last week. I mean, look what he'd done. Oh, my Lord, he was lost. He messed up. He goofed up really bad, had an affair with another woman, had her husband killed. And, uh, and let's, let's see what he says here. In, in Psalms 51, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. 
And he said, you know, I, I, I've been guilty. I've, I've carried this guilt around for so long. I know I've messed up, but Lord, wipe all that clean and, and, and drive all that away from me. And uh, only God can do that, but he will. He forgives. He casts your sins, as the Bible says, as far as the east is from the west. You know, you notice he didn't say as far as the north is from the south, because if you keep going north, you'll hit the North Pole. And if you keep going, you'll, come, you'll start going south. Then you'll hit the South Pole. And there must be an end somewhere because you'll start going north. But there's no East and West Pole. He cast your sins to, into eternity and, and infinity. He cast your sins away completely. And we are free from that. There are a couple other things that I had uh, put down here. Your past is a part of your plan, just like David's past was a part of his plan. And God can use even those things that where we goofed up. Uh, the past of this guitar, once again, is a part of the plan for what it is today. In Ecclesiastes 7.20, there is not a single person in all the earth who is always good and never sins. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're the Pope or it doesn't matter if you're Greg Laurie. It doesn't matter who you are. Uh, it, you know, Robert Jeffress, it doesn't matter who you are in life. Uh, everybody can sin. Everybody can mess up. James 3 and 2, we all stumble in many ways. In Luke 19 and 10, I came to save and to restore what was lost. Satan comes to steal. God comes to restore. Amen. In John uh, 10 and 10, I'm talking like a preacher now. <laughs> I remember when I first started doing the Taylor Guitar Clinics years ago, I would say, well, here, you just put your finger here, and then and if you want to do a harmonic, be 12 frets, hallelujah. Hey, man, it works. Look at that. Hallelujah. And a friend of mine went, he said, you got to quit talking like a preacher. So forgive me. Anyway, well, I don't know. That's just me. John 10 and 10, the thief's pur purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy, but my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. And those are the words of Christ. And uh, in Romans 8, 28, we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. And does good work good for everybody? Does bad things work good for everybody? Does all things work good for everybody? No, only for those that love God and those that are called according to his purpose. Let me read that again. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. And everybody has, has had some kind of problems in your life. And a friend of mine asked me today, what do you think about the pandemic? What did God have to do with that? I want to say not one thing as far as creating that, but I do believe he allowed it to happen. And uh, we've all been through it. The whole world is a worldwide pandemic. I lost a lot of friends. I can think of them in my mind right now. I lost some very, very good friends that did not make it through that. Somehow we push through and press through that, you and I, right now. If you're listening to me, some of you were in the hospital. The, the lady that does my fingernails was in the hospital for uh, a month, for 30 days, and they had pretty much given up on her. They thought she was going to die, and she's still doing my nails. I mean, she pulled out of it, and I'm, I'm thankful to God. I don't have all of the answers, and why you're still here, and I'm still here, and a lot of our friends aren't. All I can say is he wants us to love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's the purpose. That's the greatest thing. Jesus said uh, to a, a lawyer, a, a, long, a young lawyer, that said, what's the greatest commandment in, in, in the law? And he said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. He says, what will actually get me to heaven? He said that. And there's another one, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. And so the difference is, even though we've all gone through these things, the Christ-centered person and the one that has a calling in their life, the ones that God uses as an instrument, will cause good to happen out of it and, and, and be a blessing to other people and help other people through what you've gone through and be a blessing. That's the difference. Uh, once again, the, the greatest, uh, I think the greatest plan for this old telecaster is just what happened to it. <laughs> in Romans 8 uh, verse 1 there is no therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus 
who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Uh, if this guitar could talk, I bet it could tell me some stories. But you know one thing about it? I've never had it look at me and said, don't ask me to do that. Ever. It just goes right along with whatever I want. That's the way we ought to be. says I'm your friend except for Jesus he says I've chosen to call you my friend Father God, thank you, Lord, for the example of this old guitar. Thank you for putting it back together, 
given it a new heart. <laughs> Here's one. Here's another one. For a new body, a new purpose. God, I pray that you will show that purpose to everyone listening to me today, that we won't make excuses. And who am I, once again, that I can do something great for God? I'm just an old telecaster. Lord, bless everyone at the sound of my voice today. Bless them. Encourage them. Everything that Satan has tried to steal from them, restore your purpose Restore your goals. Your, restore the dream on the inside of them. Lord, restore the abilities to be able to write songs and music and poetry. Give it back to them, Lord, and let them dust the dust off of their gifts and use it once again for your glory. And we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. If there's anyone that doesn't know Christ, say, Lord, forgive me my sins. Come into my heart. I receive you as Lord in Jesus' name. And he'll make you just like a brand new Telecaster. <laughs> well, God bless you folks. Thank you so much for joining me on my Sunday string along.